Stevie Eskenazi and Nick Gubbins shone as Middlesex cruised to a second successive Royal London One Day Cup victory, the margin at Lords against Gloucestershire being six wickets with 46 balls to spare. Bowling first after winning the toss, Tim Murta was soon on target, trapping George Hankins in front in the fourth over. But Gareth Roderick and Chris Dent didn't take too long to make the most of the splendid conditions, the pair finding the boundary rope on numerous occasions as they added 64 runs for the second wicket in good time. That stand was brought to an end by Toby Rowland-Jones, Dent picking out Tom Helm to fall for 47. Roderick soon followed for 38, Paul Sterling having the batsman taken behind, Gloucestershire now on 101 for 3 after 18 overs. James Bracey then took on the attack, twice clearing the rope off Sterling. And then also going big off Roland Jones, another maximum, bringing up Bracey's 50 made from only 32 deliveries. Bracey looked in fine touch, adding 111 runs for the fourth wicket with Benny Howell. Bracey, making his list a debut, was out for 83. George Scott with the catch off Murta. The batsman made those runs of just 61 balls. Howell then fell for a more patient 55, Roland Jones with his second wicket, which reduced the visitors to 234 for five. The last 10 overs were not kind to the Gloucesters. Dubbin Milan bowled Jack Taylor for nine, while Helm did for Ryan Higgins, Nathan Souter, the man who held on. Souter was wicketless on this occasion, a late six from Daniel Worrell, seeing the visitors finish their innings on 283 for seven. Sterling was, as ever, quick out of the blocks at the start of the Middlesex reply, these two sixes being struck from the first eight balls faced by the Irishman. However, his stay was not a long one, Matt Taylor having him taken behind for 19. John Simpson gave Worrell a return catch in the next over to depart without troubling the scorers. And when Milan also fell to the Victorian for 13, Middlesex were in a bit of a mess on 36 for 3. Such a predicament didn't seem to bother Owen Morgan, however. He wasn't out in the middle for too long, but when he was, he cleared the rope three times on his way to a very breezy 38. Chris Little then removed him, the home team, on 103 for four inside the 18th over. The game was balanced nicely until Eskenazi and Govins put the result beyond any doubt. Eskenazi recorded his maiden list A50 in his 10th appearance. He'd used up 48 deliveries. Gubbins was also raising his bat for the second game in a row. Back-to-back -back boundaries had him at his 50 of 47 balls. And the partnership grew and grew with both men enjoying themselves enormously as they went about their business with ease. Some nerves may have been shredded in Friday's win in Essex, but this was a much more clinical display. Eskenazi was simply outstanding. His ninth four took him to 99, and his maiden white ball 100 was completed next delivery, the 92nd he'd faced. It was a wonderful display from the 25-year-old. With that out of the way, Gubbins took over, taking three fours off a Howell over, which had him up to 94, with only two runs needed to secure the victory. Howie would have loved to complete the win with a maximum, but instead he hit a four to end undefeated on 98, the unbroken stand for the fifth wicket, finishing on 184. Eskenazi went off with 107 runners to his name. The game concluded with 46 balls to spare. So that's two wins from two, with Hampshire next in their sights in Southampton on Tuesday.